Welcome back to It's All Fun and Games. The idea of remaking a video game is nothing new, and it's a great way to introduce a classic game to players who might not have tried it the first time around. Sometimes remakes can happen a bit too quickly, only waiting until one generation later, and other times it's long overdue. Wonder Boy The Dragon Trap was released in 1989 for the Sega Master System, and now it's finally been remade for current generation consoles. But does it strike up a good balance between new content and staying true to its roots to be worth your time and money? Let's find out the secret of Wonder Boy's power. Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap was developed by Lizard Cube and it's out now for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. For this remake, the developers wanted to match the timing, physics, and reactions of the original game with only minor tweaks. To do this, they actually reverse engineered the code from the original cartridge. A truly impressive feat and a testament to their desire for accuracy. People familiar with the Master System version will feel right at home, but now with HD graphics, a widescreen aspect ratio, and an increased frame rate of 30 to 60 frames per second for smoother gameplay. And much like the original, it's all about gameplay, not about story. The bare bones tale is quickly glossed over in a short cutscene before being thrust right into the action. You are Wonder Boy, a wandering adventurer in Monsterland. After handing defeat to the vile Mega Dragon, all should be well, right? But instead, a curse is placed upon you, transforming you into a hideous lizard man. Yeah, you'll break some mirrors with that ugly mug, but you do gain new abilities. Wonder Boy must use those powers to set off across Monsterland and lift the curse. However, the more progress made, the more curses you end up with, each one transforming you into a different beast. A nice addition to the remake is that now you can choose to play as Wonder Girl, something I wish more games gave you the option for. Though sadly, there's no visual difference between Wonder Boy and Girl in the monster forms. After the initial transformation into Lizard Man, the game starts off in a village, which acts as the hub world to the levels. There is little hand-holding as where you need to go and what to do next. I dig this approach because I enjoy the exploration and figuring things out on my own, rather than having a tutorial. But in case you need it, there is a menu screen that shows you the controls. There's a button to attack, jump, and to use your secondary weapon. Each monster form you get will have different abilities. The lizard can spit fire, mouse can cling to marked walls, fish guy can swim, lion can slash vertically, and bird has the power of flight. That's levitation, Holmes. These abilities are what will clue you in on where to go next, because specific areas can only be accessed by certain monsters, and levels are then designed around that particular form, so you won't be able to quick change from one monster to another. To change forms, you'll need to find a transformation pedestal in various locations. This is great because it ensures that each monster gets their fair share of playtime, since most levels can only be done by one form. Sure, you'll have your personal favorite, mine were the lion and the mouse man, but having to try and use them all makes for fun, varied gameplay. The levels are composed of platforming and combating monsters, and awaiting you at the end of each is a boss battle. If you succeed, you'll be cursed with a new monster form. The fighting can be challenging at times, but what adds depth to the gameplay is there's an RPG element. You can buy and find upgrades for armor, shields, and swords, and this will increase your attack and defense stats, making tougher foes easier to dispatch. Though some baddies can be pretty cheap, showing up with no warning. There are also secondary weapons like arrows, boomerangs, and lightning. I didn't find myself using these too often, as they were fairly weak and I could never stockpile a good amount, especially since when you die you lose all the items you're holding. Having these items in shops to buy would have been nice, instead secondary weapons seem kind of pointless since I rarely had many. A big bummer too, cause they were fun to use. The level design can be hit or miss, with most being a treat to navigate, but others, like the sunken ship, are far too flat with little platforming or choice on routes to take, so you end up just walking in one direction and killing enemies until you reach the boss. Not too exciting, but the majority of the levels are enjoyable, and discovering secret areas adds replayability. I've never been a stickler for realistic graphics, I much prefer a well-designed art style, and Wonder Boy the Dragon Strap has that in spades. The art is what caught my eye and why I wanted to try this game out, which is very unusual for me. It looks outstanding with beautiful hand-drawn animations, extremely vibrant colors, and detailed scrolling backgrounds. All the animal forms look great, and the movement is silky smooth. Its high quality reminds me of Disney animations. The other characters and enemies aren't exactly unique in design, but they give off loads of personality, especially coupled with some of the funny dialogue. The developers also included a retro graphic style, which should please fans of the original. You can swap styles instantly with the push of a button. 
The 8-bit style's all well and good, though it's been done to death in recent years, and the animation just blows it out of the water. It kind of feels like a disservice to the animator's hard work not to play in the new style, but options are always nice, so you can play how you like. Speaking of options, if you do choose the retro style, you can mess around with a bunch of different settings like scan lines and color. It's pretty awesome. The soundtrack provides a fantastic complement to the hand-drawn animations with live instrumentation. The songs have been rearranged from the original with a variety of instruments such as violins, oboes, clarinets, guitars, and many others. But what good would the retro style graphics be if there wasn't some bleeps and bloops to go along with it? So just like with the graphics, you can toggle between real instruments and chiptunes at the push of a button. And I really enjoyed both versions. All the options serve as an example of how much care was put into this remake and that it wasn't simply a cash grab. As you progress through the game, you can unlock illustrations, concept art, animations, and even clips of the musicians in the studio. I always love this because it gives you a great look into all the hard work put into making the game. The whole game took me about 5 hours to beat in one sitting, and it made for a truly wonderful afternoon. Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap was definitely a labor of love from its developers. While there are a few flaws, it does have extremely polished gameplay, a catchy soundtrack, and gorgeous high definition graphics which all together earn it my recommendation. This is the perfect place to jump into the series because of its fresh coat of paint and a fair price of $20. So leave the mucky muck of poor remakes behind and enter the castle filled with clouds that is Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap. Thanks for watching everyone, I will see you next time and remember, it's all fun and games. Thanks for watching everyone, if you enjoyed that video, why not watch some more new game reviews by clicking the playlist down below. And if you like it's all fun and games, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again!